The Living Zen Podcast is a gift from the Victoria Zen Center. If you enjoy it, please forget about making a donation. Instead, rate it, review it, and share it with a friend that you think will enjoy it as much as you did. You may also consider purchasing the Living Zen Podcast app, which is now available on the iTunes App Store. Thank you for listening. From the very beginning of our Zen practice, we're instructed uh, and uh, encouraged to pay attention to this simple activity of our breath. We take up this straight posture. We create this uh, stable, supportive environment so that we can uh, reduce the distractions that we have in life so that we can bring our awareness to this simple activity that is with us every moment of our lives, from the moment that we're born to the moment that we die, this simple activity of our breath. And we find that when we investigate it, it has two activities. It has this inhalation and exhalation activity. When I speak about Zen, when I talk about Buddhism, I talk about two activities, the activity of birth, the activity of death. We can understand these two uh, opposing, uh, cooperative, uh, facing, simultaneous activities Uh, we can express them in many different ways. We can say uh, in-breathing and out-breathing. We can say birth and death. We can say arising and dissolving. We can say plus and minus. Uh, It's the teaching of Tathagata Zen, which is the school that I was trained in, that all things in this vast cosmos Uh, experience this same activity. In fact, we might say that all things in this vast cosmos are nothing other than this fundamental activity of plus and minus. So when we take up this posture, when we uh, bring ourselves into this uh, practice when we bring our awareness to the activity of the breath, we're not just sitting here following the activity of our breathing, but we're becoming more and more aware, more experientially, deeply aware of the fundamental activity of this cosmos. One of the words or one of the terms that I use uh, often in Dharma talks and that I am sometimes worried people misunderstand it or misinterpret it or um, impose something upon it that is not intended. It's a term that I hear used a lot more and more in uh, sort of spiritual media, which is to be in the moment. And often when I use this term, the moment, I say, the activity of this moment. And this is a very important distinction because it is our habit and it is the position of Buddhism and of Zen that this habit of taking things as distinct objects, the habit of taking ourselves as a fixed thing, which stands separate from everything else in this cosmos. The habit of taking this place as a fixed thing, which is separate from us, distinct from us, uh, uh, is the origin of difficulty, is the place where we find suffering. 
The Buddha used this term uh, for a, uh, a person who has found their way into practice, a person who has started to open their eyes to the uh, way things are. He used the term a stream entrant. And this is very much what we do in this practice. We transition, we change, we transform our perspective of this world from being one where we take things as being solid. We take ourselves, we take others, we take uh, physical objects, environments, relationships as being things, objects, solid, distinct, uh, independent, uh, separate. And we're always fighting this. We're always finding this uh, dissatisfaction with the object that we are, the object that we have, this relationship as an object as we experience it, or the environment, the job, the situation that we're in. We're always moving about and chasing after a better object, a better situation, a better relationship. We're always looking for a better me that I can finally rest in. We're always looking for the uh, perfect relationship that we can rest in. Oh, I'll be so happy if I could just have a partner. Oh, I'll be so happy if I could just get married. Oh, if I, could, I would be so happy if I could just get that job or make that much money or live in that neighborhood or drive that car. But if we take the time to investigate how we experience our lives, we've been doing this, this same practice since the time we were children. We'd be happy if we could just get that toy or that bike or if so-and-so would just pass me a letter in class. I'd be so happy. But we find that that happiness, the satisfaction of accomplishment, of realizing this situation we've been seeking, is momentary at best. No sooner do we arrive than we begin to look for the next object, the next place, the next station, where we think we're going to find our satisfaction. What happens to the station where we were? What happens to the person that we are? What happens to the place where we have worked so hard to get? It dissolves. It uh, melts away and breaks apart. It dissolves. But it doesn't stop us. We don't look back. So it never stops us from realizing, or it never stops us from continuing to chase the object, the solid, distinct, lasting, permanent, fixed, separate place that we think is out there. So when we come to practice, we are asked to stop just for a moment, stop chasing, stop running away, and investigate what's going on in this very moment, the activity that is this very moment, the activity which is this thing that we call I, this activity which is this thing that we call this place, this activity which we call our lives. And we find that it is made up of these two fundamental activities. The activity of arising, becoming, birth. And the activity of dissolving, disappearing, death. Plus and minus. What we call a moment 
This moment is not an object. It's not a thing. It's not a place where we can uh, stop or pause or rest. It is an activity which is constantly unfolding anew. This experience that we're having is already dying. Simultaneously, a new activity is being born. When we spend all of our lives looking for this object, looking for this place, looking for this thing that we can hold on to or catch that will provide us with satisfaction and fulfillment, we're already trying to hang on to a corpse, to something that has already passed its expiration date. We're standing or looking to stand on something which is solid, the ground. As we continue to practice, and as we continue to awaken to the activity that is all things in this cosmos, we begin to realize that our lives, this thing that we call I, these experiences that we have as human beings are not objects. They're not things. They are an activity. An activity which is ceaseless, continuously uh, being reborn and dying. It's not solid, it's fluid. The metaphor that the Buddha uses for somebody who begins to awaken to this is a stream entrant. We have stepped off of the path of ground, of solidity, taking things as objects, and entered a stream which is flowing, moving, transforming, without rest, without cease, without end. When we view the world as fixed, when we view ourselves as fixed, when we take our relationships and situations as uh, objects, we are bound. We're tied up in our own ideas about how things ought to be, how we ought to be, how things should turn out. When we understand this cosmos as an activity, as the constant manifestation of this activity of plus and minus, we're able to move, we're able to transform, we're able to continue to meet the activity of this moment harmoniously, appropriately, spontaneously, with wisdom, because we understand the activity. So when we uh, take up this posture, sometimes people will ask me, uh, gee, you do a lot of sitting. Doesn't it ever get boring? Just sitting there and watching your breath, experiencing your breath. My honest answer is no. Because I'm not sitting here watching my breath. I'm watching the unfolding of the activity of the cosmos. And personally, I can't think of anything more exciting. The Diamond Sutra, one of the most famous lines in the Diamond Sutra, the Buddha says, give rise to a mind that rests on no thing whatever. So the practice that we can take up throughout our lives, in our day-to-day lives, is to observe, is to be aware of where it is that we're trying to put weight, where it is that we're, we're taking as a platform or a resting place or a position or an object when we're asked a question about something, where we're 
thinking about where we're going or what we're trying to accomplish, just for a moment ask ourselves, am I taking this as a place, as an object, as somewhere that I think I can rest or stop, where something will end? And if I do, then the practice is to just let it go. Step back into the stream, which is your life. The Living Zen Podcast is a gift from the Victoria Zen Center. If you enjoy it, please forget about making a donation. Instead, rate it, review it, and share it with a friend that you think will enjoy it as much as you did. You may also consider purchasing the Living Zen Podcast app, which is now available on the iTunes App Store. Thank you for listening.